atie fo ma kwa baba pog eye media so i pog highway ena eye pog mrante ya jibre ni ajipene se ye di abeja fo e be fa highway ni mus fa highway ni so no ma hu de e ko so na ya san e be fa highway ni highway ni so no message just say to subscribe ya obe subscribe na wa like you made no wa share no for from so nsa etumi aka no mate de eko so e o p o g e highway ni so na ye ba wura e ye nsema ba nsema ba highway ni so na ye nanoa nanoa da nsema e ye e ye o man peni e ye nanado dan kwa e de to e eja e wo bra na o mo bo apro na nsema de to je yiche se o fre e ye wura john dramani mahama se o bra no be debate e ye Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, eh, the new flag bearer for the MPP, eh, Amanyoku, no. Na, you are John Dramani, Mahama, eh, de, eh, mwaye biaba. Meshe, se, eh, bebo, eh, rasa, anzi, mwenye, ti, eh, mwaya, eh, free, eh, eh, JM, akache, aba, highway, nesu. But anyway, another good thing I've seen this week is that this statement coming from the man himself, the legend, the visionary person, the person that is coming to save Ghana. He said, I will not elevate Baumia, to my level by debating him he should go and debate the people of ghana and apologize to them i know my level i, I, I love this statement i know my level you know that song from shatawale i know my level the man said i know my level today baumia have no message so we all know what he's trying to do is that he is trying to use the reputation the achievement of JM to shine small. That's what he's trying to do. But it's not going to work. The man told him, point black, it's not going to work. In 2016, John Mahama called for a debate. What did he say? In 2020, Mahama called for a debate. What did they say? They say he should go and debate the people of Ghana. So today, John Mahama is telling them the same thing. They should go and debate the people of Ghana that are suffering. Today, they said they have arrested the city. But today, see, when you take one dollar, you are getting 15 cities. This government has borrowed more than any government. We moved from $12 billion to today to almost $74 billion. And you ask yourself, what did they use the money for? They borrowed more than $62 billion in eight years. What did they use the money for? See the number of people that are suffering. More than 3 million people in Ghana today are pushed into poverty. They cannot even spend $2 a day. People cannot eat three meals a day. That's how people are suffering. They have no message. So they want to use the shine of Mahama. And Mahama is telling Baumia, I know my level. You cannot trick me. I know my level. And that will not work. And that is a strong message going out there for, for, for Baumia. And you should know that the NDC of today is not going to take it easy. They are really up to it, and then they're going to do it. So um, for people watching us on uh, Radio Gold, uh, you can uh, send your message to the number that I shown before, plus one, two, four, zero, six, oh, eight, ninety, two, sixty, four is the number you can send uh, your uh, test message to. I'll be reading those test messages as we are going along. But uh, for now, let's dive more into um, the topics. Now, <laughs> um, <laughs> Narado sometimes you make me laugh. Narado is asking John Mahama, he want to know his position on this uh, free SHS, the free senior high school, that he want to know his position. <laughs> and I love the way John Mahama replied. He said, when you stop sleeping, you will hear clearly my position on free SHS. Mama, Mahama hit back at Akufuado. The man is sleeping on a job. Well, we know what John Mahama has said. Mahama has said this over and over and over. He said when he comes to power, he's not coming to cancel the free secondary school education. He's not coming to cancel it. But he's going to review the policy to make sure that we have those infrastructure that we need so that our kids will stay in school. Today, the kids will go to school for three weeks and they will stay home for three months because they are no infrastructure to keep them at school so john muhammad said when he come he's going to build all those abandoned e-block he's going to revive that he's going to make sure that there's money to feed the student he's going to make sure that the problem that the free shs is facing today is coming to solve it 
That is the man position. And this man has said this over and over and over again. And we also know that it's John Mahama that started these preachers because under the leadership of a great leader, of a visionary leader, he started what we call progressive free SHS. He started it, making sure that like he started with the day students, first year, gradually, he has a plan. So the man started it. Something that the man started cannot cancel it. But these MPP folks rush into conclusion because they wanted at all costs. They wanted at all costs that the people of Ghana will vote for them because they brought these free HHS. You see, that is the issue. But this is not going to happen. You know, John Mahama is the man. And he knows exactly what he's about to do. And he, he, he told this over and over again. But because our man is actually sleeping on the job, he's not, he's not aware that John Mahama has already tackled the issue. And then he moved on to say something. <laughs> this man is so funny. Eh? He, he asked John Mahama, Mr. Mahama, or Mr. GM, where do you stand in the Galamse fight? What are you telling the people of Ghana? You see how funny this man is? You see how funny Nanado is? Why are you asking Jomahama this question? Who is in power? Who is the president? So you are expecting Jomahama to come with a plan on fighting Galamse for you? You went to the people of Ghana in 2016, in 2020 also, to ask them to vote for you to fight Galamse, and you also said that you are putting your presidency on the line. So why are you asking John Mahama for his position? We we're all here in 2019 or 2019, 2020, when COVID hit Ghana. Mahama came up with a plan that will help to resolve the COVID issue. What happened? You, Nanado, and the rest of the MPP folks were laughing at him. So today you are asking him to give you a plan on how he's going to address Galamse? Are you kidding me? This is the same man that made a proposition during COVID-19 and you laugh at him. And today you want a, something from him, but you are the president. You're supposed to come with a plan. He's an opposition leader. He is not governing this country. He's not the one in charge. You have all the power. So if you want to fight Galamse, fight Galamse. The real question is, what is your real position? What is your real position? Because you have Ghana Armed Forces, you have the police, you have all the force, you have all the tools to fight this Galancé. But today, see our rivers. Our rivers are polluted. See our rivers. Our farmlands are gone. Agriculture is affected. More than 38 forests in Ghana today are affected. People are having all kinds of diseases. Kidney disease, heart attack, and all that. Due to what? To these Galamse activities. So, what are you doing as a president to actually stop that? Stop asking an opposition leader for his position. He is not in charge. We want, we want um, a solution now. And people are tired of the situation and they decided to demonstrate. This is their democracy hub. What happened to them? More than 53 people were arrested for doing nothing, for complaining how bad. Things are, are in our country, especially the Galamse. And you arrested them. So what are you talking about? And are you talking about, oh, you know what? Uh, I put my presidency on the line. Because of that, we lost seats in the Galamse constituency. Are you kidding me? You watch the video. Last election in the, in the mining districts of the country, the MPP did very badly. When I said I was making, putting my presidency on the line, that's what I meant. That I was prepared to take the political risk involved in trying to deal with this Galamse phenomenon. The result, of course, was that the mining districts, especially in the western region, all of them, including almost, nearly, even Takwa, was lost to the MPP. See, so the man is saying that he lost seats in the Galamse area. Nobody should deceive you. See, let me tell you something. As a matter of fact, they did not lose any seat in the Galamse area. Even if they lost, they lost about 
two percent. They maintain ninety eight percent of their seat in all the Galamse area. They didn't lose actually lose anything. They lost those few two percent because of bad performance, not because of Galamse. They even actually got maximum votes in those Galamse area because they are actually the leaders of this Galamse. They are leading those Galamse activities. You know, even on some Galamse site, we have soldiers guiding the Galamse site. So what are we talking about? What are we saying? That, yes, because I put my presidency on the line, we lost our seat in the Galamse area. It's a lie. It's a total lie. Go and check your fact. They only lost about one or two seats. That's it. They maintain the rest. So 98% of the seats in the Galamse area, they maintain it. They didn't lose anything. Are they really fighting for this Galamse? No. I want you to listen to this man. Um, I love the way he talked about this Galamse issue, Abbas uh, Nuruddin. You know, listen to Abbas Nuruddin and listen to what he said about this Galamse issue when the president said that they lost 90, uh, 100% or they lost uh, their Galamse uh, seat. You, you listen to him. As a matter of fact, of MPP won 98% of all Galamse constituencies. We are proof. Maybe. At Ashanti region, uh -huh. MPP won all Galamse constituencies. Sure? Right or wrong? Manson can tell MPP won. Manson will be MPP won. Odo Tobri MPP won. Bosome Frenho MPP won. Galamse constituencies in Amebo Bacho. A Honina. At a Buakwa one was here, yeah, Galamse or Banchas and MPP won. I have important why, yeah, Galamse in MPP won. So why is your proof? Oh, when you be Biana, yes, Chrama or Sabeka. Sometimes you should be mindful of your reputation. It's every Ashanti region. Uko is you listen very well. Listen to him. Ashanti region. Ashanti region. There are two one casa. And you you allow me. About all the about 25 Galamse constituencies in Ashanti region, MPP won. So, doctor, your claim say MPP lost in Galamse constituency a lie. Let's go to Eastern region. MPP won in all Galamse constituencies in Eastern region, <laughs> but for Akwetia and Akwetia the entire we'll one and by one. because of Galamse, and because I must say, if you say a kofo be be two no, and no sabotage and MPP and the army, so in uh, Akwetia two, you are lying. Three, you call Western region, Western region, you will see it to be oh how you are in here, Galamse, yes, I you koko, this is Memphis Central, no me abie, tradition, traditionally, yeah, this is strong old data, but typical Galamse constituencies. Doctor, typical Galamse constituencies in Western region like Mpoho, West uh, MPP one. Upper Western of Badiani MPP one Galamse constituencies. Mpoho, Mpoho West so, region. So it is a complete lie. At the Ayami Yani Sanka Syria call an ekan Kenyam Yatis a doctor who work with figures. What you say? At the Ayas me 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 doctor Nakwa Tifu. Mr. Sasson, like you, I'll be like you, Jumedi, in a unsubscribe, so I'll drop your subscription. Now, what any of the notification icon, no, so they be updates be on soon, sir. A bit to me, I can. Now, it's in semi, and I can be a coyes, MPP, a manual corner, a BBA, said the Abaya, a December seventh, a banner bit to me, a call, a dear mom, a son, your master say, your master say, attack, yeah, and DC, a manual corner, and so it's in semi, I told you, yeah, and say, John Dramani Mahama on any dom or money or margin say or more a bejina a year intimidation a free a year NDC and I say a free MPP a catch a banner. Young to us in tears as in me, but I say Doctor Nyakwena, Doctor May has a net doctor for you, Doctor Nyakwena, ninety eight per cent of Galamse constituencies and PP one. Baby, I'm going to lose you. Oko boy, a lusu or la da diko topo, la da diko topo ya ya galamse o. Enye galamse beba. Martin Yindam, omu a deputy chief with lusu o panda, panda ya ya galamse o. Hajia Alima Mahama, a lusu o na lerugu, na lerugu ya ya galamse o. Oko jama enough, sampa, MPP lusu ya sampa ya ya galamse o. Oko jama south. Oko Jamai South, you saw the problem. The issue is that the claim by the MPP say they lost in Galamse areas because they were. It's a lie because they won. It's a blanket lie. Percent of Galamse. Unim di meba. Twaso twaso. So, <laughs> so 
So you see that this whole MPP, right? And this whole MPP, they are scam. So you as a president, even if they roast stuff for you, won't you check to make sure? You see how the man mentioned, how Abbas mentioned all the constituency. These people only lost 2% of the seat. They re retained 98 And those 2% was because of bad performance. But they are here shouting, oh, we put our presidency on the line and we lost some seats. It's a lie. They are not doing anything. That's why you hear Brian Champon coming to say that state of emergency won't stop Galance without community action. What community action are you talking about, my friend? What community action are you talking about? So you are not going to tell me that the people, the community, are more, they are more stronger than the state? Let me ask you something. When back in the days, in the north, there's a fight and then you put curfew. Who the hell are you those days to jump curfew? So are you telling me that the people are more stronger than the state? Are you kidding me? And you are telling me that, oh, without the intervention of the community, you can't do anything. You guys know the site of Galamse already. You know where the Galamse people are. You know where they are. You know who are doing it. You can fight them. Stop making arguments. Today, as I'm speaking, the, this government have been deployed soldiers at the borders of Ghana to stop the exportation of food. When people use their own money to cultivate food, you ask them not to to, to export those food, to put ban on it because of, you know, of your failed plan for food policy. So you are able to do that. You are able to ban the exportation of food by putting soldiers at the borders. So why can't you fight Galamse? See, let me tell you the fact. The fact is that if today this government really decide to fight Galamse, they'll fight. Just imagine for a second, if they say, if they caught you doing Galamse, if they caught you destroying our rivers, if they caught you destroying our forests, They'll put it in jail for 15 years. You think somebody will do this galamse, illegal galamse anymore? If they say, you, the owners of excavators, the owners of equipment for galamse, if they caught you, you go to jail. Eh? You go to jail for 20 years. You think somebody will do it again? If you're a foreigner and you're involved in illegal galamse, you go to jail for 30 years. Don't you think that will stop Galamse? If you are an appointee of government and you are involved in Galamse, you go for you go to jail for 20 years. See, if they put draconian measures in place, this Galamse will stop overnight. But guess what? They will not do it. Read my lips. They will not. Why? Because they are the pillars of Galamse. I'm not saying it. One of their ministers said it. But according to investigation, their neck is in deep. The MPP, the Jubilee House, is the headquarters of Galamse. So they cannot stop it. That's why we are finding so, so much difficulty about this. They, they can't stop it. It's not possible. Because they are doing it for money. Because they need money to run stuff. And they are deep into it. They cannot stop. So all this issue, we are putting our presidency on the line. It's just a lie. All right, I'm going to wrap up with the last topic of the day about EC has disqualified NDC parliamentarian candidate for a Memphis Central, Joanna Jan Kojwe. You see, is EC our electoral commission serious at all? Let me give you a small background about this. In 2023, the primary for the parliamentary was organized by NDC. And then an injunction was put on that election. Although she won, they put an injunction by saying that the way she won was not good, was illegal and all that. So the NDC came out to organize a second election, primary election, where she won. And then the injunction was removed. But do you know that on October 9th, right, if I'm not mistaken, if I get the, the, the day right, on October, um, October 10th, yeah, on October 10th, October 10th, the EC came and said that the woman is disqualified. Guess what? They didn't even check with the court to find out whether that injunction 
injunction still exists. So the road to her to tell her she's disqualified on the 10th, and then the road to secondary high court on October 16th to check to see whether, whether the injunction is still there. You see, like sometimes I don't know how these are people work. You see how Jay Mensah, the chairperson of the EC, she's inconsistent and very controversial. What you check before making an announcement? This is very poor management. And then this make us think a certain way like, is this EC up to something? Because you have to do due diligence before you mention something because these, are, these things are crucial to the nation. You don't just wake up and write a letter to someone to tell the person he or she is disqualified without doing your due diligence. You, you see that? So that's where my problem is. So you see that this woman, Jay Mensah, She's so controversial. She's so inconsistent. That's why I always tell the NDC that they have to be vigilant because this election is all about do and die. They have to be very vigilant. They have to monitor these people. If they don't, this election, they will rig this election because almost all the institutions are in the favor of the MPP. So they need to be careful. They have to have a task force on election day to make sure that they win election at the police station. There's nothing like Supreme Court because we all know today the Supreme Court, we all know people are calling the unanimous FC. If you take the case to, 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 to the, the Supreme Court, then it is a lost case. All right, so we're going to... We have about 23 minutes to end this show. So we're going to start taking calls. I'm going to activate the phone line. And I would love the people to call me. Um, so that I have your opinion uh, on the issues that we discussed today. As I mentioned, we are live on Radio uh, Gold. We are live on um, Kiss FM. Live on Mac FM. And then we are live on all our um, media platforms. So um, social platform. So... Um, you are welcome to call the line. Uh, the line once again is here plus one two four zero six zero eight nine two sixty four. Especially people that are uh, listening to us from Radio Gold. Um, if someone can do me a favor, test the line or call me. I'll be very happy because this is our first time doing the show on Radio Gold. So we want to know how people are uh, uh, listening. How did they see the show? What is their impression about our first uh, time on Radio Gold? So. I'll give the opportunity for people to call. So you can call plus one two four zero six zero eight ninety two sixty four is the number to call. You can also test me on uh, on the same number plus one two four zero six zero eight ninety two sixty four for us to talk about all the issues that I, I brought up. Uh, let's have a chat before I go. I still have twenty three minutes uh, to be live on radio, uh, to be live on uh, on social media platform. Uh, so you can call me. Uh, let's do the needy uh, and then let's talk about Ghana uh, politics. So I'm waiting for my first caller. I'm waiting for my first test message. I believe you guys, you guys can still see the number, but um, I can tell you a statement by um, John Mahama that I know my level. I just like that statement. You see, Baumia, he has no message. The only thing Baumia has been telling Ghania is that vote for me because I am a Northerner. Vote for me because I'm a Muslim. That's actually having a message. And all the promises that they made, like, oh, we're going to get internet for all, like, internet for all secondary school. They couldn't do it. Do they see the free SHS they are offering students? People are suffering. People are even paying more because they rush into taking the decision. Baumia is not serious. He told us that he's going to arrest the city, but this today, see the city. You take one dollar, you're taking 15 cities. He told us that the money is here, that you're not going to borrow any money. But today, this government has borrowed more than any government. If you take all the president since Nkuma time to all the president, they only borrow, all of them together, borrow 12 billion dollars. But Nanado alone borrowed more than 62 billion. All right, let me take my first caller. 
Hello, caller. Hello. Yeah. Is that the Honorable Joseph Yani show? Yeah, this is a uh, DJ Mark Hello. show. Yeah. Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah, this is. Uh... All right. I think uh, we have some technical issues, but uh, you can call back. Uh, plus one two four zero six zero eight ninety two sixty four. That's it. So J Brain, Aj Penny, Edema, P O G A M Media. Say a P O G Ranty and found for highway in the soul. Nete de Nehundi Ecoso El Highway in the soul. Na best as a song subscriber, yeah, or subscribe in our like it. Now I share now for France and so it's me. I can answer once and can be as well. Or the best share a year the comment section on a PUG Ranty. You're back kind of a year in my year. It has its origin, Brema PUG.